Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. I am seriously knocking these out because I am super behind. But this recap is going to be very simple because frankly I skipped all the fluff just for you guys just so you can know exactly what the hell happened in here. Okay. The episode opens with Michael a hopeful groom getting ready to marry a stranger. However, things take an unexpected turn as I don't know if you realize this. You, you should have realized this. We, had, we did not meet his fiance in the last episode which i don't know why when i first watched this episode i didn't even pay attention to that okay but these people knew what the hell they were doing that's why they were like oh we have to find you a we have to find you a bride so the bride comes out and the unexpected that has never happened in married at first sight history happens the bride decides that she really does not want to marry a stranger. She changes her mind at the altar and Michael is very gracious and respectful. Michael is undoubtedly hurt and Married at First Sight rewinds us back two weeks earlier, which is very annoying. Can you just go in chronological order, please? You're confusing everybody. Anyway, that was so stupid. So we get a sneak peek into the lives of the other brides and grooms as they get ready to I don't know, get their lives together, okay? They're about to be married in two weeks. So they're telling their friends and family about the fact that they're getting married in two weeks. Then they go to do bridal and suit shopping for the wedding. They add that bachelorette, bachelor party for that little trashy touch. <laughs> that doesn't say that on my script, but you know what? I like to go off script all the time. Now we're gonna get to the wedding day. And the only wedding that they do in this episode is Brennan and Emily. I don't know why they started stretching out these weddings like between like two and three weeks. Can you guys please get your lives together? Because it's very irritating. Okay. And I know, you know, I know it's just annoying. Y'all stretching these episodes out. Now you're throwing these. Then on top of that, they're throwing these additional after play or after. I don't know why I can't remember the name of this damn show. They throw these additional after party episodes and it's just like, bro, like get to it. So we fast forward to the wedding day of Brennan and Emily. We vows are exchanged. There's a little chemistry it seems, okay? And uh, interestingly enough, even though the show starts with Michael being disappointed and being jilted at the altar, the married at first sight producers and everyone, they don't even show all of what happened to Michael after that. They just kind of left us hanging like they always do. You know what? You guys are annoying. Okay, you guys are very extremely annoying. But guess what? You made my recap for this episode very, very short, and I appreciate you for it. All right, all right. Okay, guys, we are up to episode number two. The name of this episode is Rocky Mountain Romance, and let's just get on into the rest of the weddings. Brennan and Emily are now married. I love her freaking dress. It's beautiful. Brennan, you look so good in that tux, okay? It looks very nice, okay? I always, I like the little fluffy, sweet moments in the beginning, but... You know, I gotta be real with y'all. As much married at first sight as I've watched in my lifetime, and trust me, it's a freaking lot. I like when it gets real, just like the real world. So yeah, this this uh, sweet wedding moments are cute and all, but um, I'm gonna need y'all to get to the real world. Like I can't wait till they move into like move into the place together. Like that's when it's gonna get real, real. If it hasn't gotten real on the honeymoon, Brennan and Emily are trying to get to know each other, and Brennan asks her, "You really haven't been in a relationship?" And she said, "Nope." And Brennan asks. Emily if he's her type and she says hot dog and he dig it at all yes okay she didn't say that but I did all right and um, she says yeah you look nice but uh, let's see how that personality is I really want to understand married at first sight producers y'all know that they're in Colorado okay you know how cold it is in Colorado in the winter or in fall or whatever why do you have these people outside you, you mean to tell me y'all couldn't set up a place inside for these people to be like in front of a fire or something? I swear, Emily just, all she talks about is partying already. So she asks Brennan, does his family like to party? So Brennan lets Emily know that his family's 100% Russian. His father doesn't even drink water. He just drinks straight whiskey through his veins. You know what? <laughs> Alrighty then, Brennan. All right. So Emily, when you mean partying, you mean drinking. Emily, do you think you have a drinking problem? Because I've noticed that you usually, um, you know what, I'll talk about that later on in the, in the later episodes, but um, you guys do know they're going to be spoilers all up and through all of these videos on this channel, right? Okay, so yeah, um, Emily, you might have a drinking problem, I'm just saying. So Brennan asks Emily about herself, and those shoes are beautiful. Those will be my wedding shoes. I'm just letting y'all know. Aren't your toes cold? I'm just wondering. Anyway, 
Emily says that she's the partier of her family. Ma'am, you don't see that as a problem? Because when when you say party, I am thinking you're just drinking. That, I mean, I don't, when, when I say party, it's a completely different thing. I don't drink. Okay. But when Emily says party, I know what you mean. Because uh, like throughout every episode that I've seen already on here, you have a glass in your hand. I'm just saying. I'm just saying what I noticed. So Brennan says that he is really feeling the vibe between him and Emily. Vibes between me and my wife are amazing. Um, I like that she's super bubbly. I like that she's so confident. It feels amazing to finally be married. Orion and Lauren get married. I loved her hair. Her hair, I thought her hair looked so beautiful. And um, oh, the thrill and loveliness of when they first get married. The smiles on their faces, their beautiful outfits. And then they always go straight to hell, usually, on this show. I'm not saying I'm looking forward to it going to hell. I'm just saying, like I said earlier, I'm looking forward to get real. Now, after teasing us for a week and a half, they finally decide to show Michael's entire non-wedding. And who who did this who did this shady creation here? I'm sure I could have done better with Photoshop. I'm just saying. And this is how I know Married at First Sight producers and all reality show producers, especially those people over there at TLC, they get on my damn nerves. They be orchestrating stuff on purpose to make drama. Of course, I don't know if you guys know this, but uh, reality is not 100% reality, okay? It's not always 100% reality. Most times it's scripted. And what I believe, I believe that the Married at First Sight people are the people that gave this man a crown for the gift and gave this man a scepter for the gift. And they're trying to make it look like the bride bought this because... That doesn't even make any damn sense. Is his birthday in September? Because I noticed um like a sapphire blue in the crown. Hmm. But in case you were wondering, when you saw last week, you saw Michael in the crown and you were saying to yourself, the same way I did, oh my God, that's a little over the top. Um, The bride, supposedly, is the person that bought that for him as a wedding gift to wear to the wedding. So that's why he had on a crown. And I was just like, okay, that's a relief. <laughs> but you know, he does seem like a man that would actually wear a crown on his own because he, you know, he's fashion forward. He likes to do kooky things, you know. So we finally get to the part we've been waiting a week and a half for, damn it. And the bride, who we now know who it is. Can I spoil it? Can I tell you what her name is? They showed a clip of her in the first episode. Okay, I don't want to spoil too much, even though this is like a week later. Actually, no, this is more than a week later. We're, you know, I'm way behind, so I'm like five weeks later. But you do know, if y'all go back and look at the first episode, if you don't want me to say anything in this one, um, you can actually see this lady. She's 39 years old, and she's in that first episode, okay? That's all I'm going to say. But anyway, let's listen to what she has to say, the mystery lady. I'm sorry. I don't think I can do this. I don't want to marry a stranger. Oh. So Michael was bitch, shut the F up. So Michael was very polite and very understanding with the bride that didn't want to marry a stranger. And although inside he's reeling, he's confused, because I know I would be confused, because like you had many, many months, young lady, to decide if you really wanted to marry a stranger. This was not like a, a, a instant thing. This was like over the course of maybe a year. Um, but you know what? People are entitled to change their mind. That's the good thing about being a human and being an adult. We can change our mind and it's okay if she if she changed her mind. I'm not going to fault her for that at all. So the mystery bride, Chloe, makes her exit. <laughs> she makes her exit. Her face not to be seen. I got a question. How come we're so respecting of her privacy, but yet married to first sight producers? You sat there and you let Michael be humiliated on national television. You try to act so understanding, but you're a bunch of buttholes, okay? I know you're a bunch of buttholes, I can tell. I can tell you're a bunch of buttholes. And what you did wasn't right. If you didn't show her, well, maybe he wanted to be on television, but, cause he had to sign off in order to be shown, but you had no problem embarrassing this man, okay? You knew you knew at the special that, he, that this was gonna happen. I don't know how, but you must've known something at that freaking special. So his friends surround him and comfort him and be there for him in his time of need, which is such an awesome thing when you have, you know, homeboys and homegirls that can stand by you like that. And now we have Becca and Austin getting married. I'm really sorry for the screen grab. That's what you get. Okay. You get what you get and you don't pitch fit. <laughs> Alrighty. Okay. Um, I'm not going through all the vows because they're just handwritten by um Lifetime themselves. So, I mean, you know, you really think I believe they sat down and wrote these emotional freaking, um, vows for a person they never met you got another thing coming buddy all right i'll keep the weddings nice and brief oh, i swear everybody's saying the same darn thing anyway 
All right, this is this is Becca's dress in case you all were wondering. It's very pretty. It's a different style that I don't even know what it's called. So, I mean, I don't really know wedding dresses like that, but this is cute. Okay, so they're they're happy. I love her bouquet. Her dress is very beautifully fitting on her body. Child, wish I had some body. But anyway, <laughs> Yeah. So we have the three couples that have married at first sight right here. All right, and we're back with Michael and um, Pastor Cal saying the unthinkable has happened. We knew there was a possibility in one of these seasons. You know, I feel bad for Michael. He seems like a very nice guy, actually. So Michael's just, he's just downtrodden. Is that the right word? Put it in the comment section if I use the right word. I think I did. But um, I didn't make up my own word there. Aren't you proud of me? But um, Michael is very sad. He's very sad. Michael is very sad. He's saying that he would have hoped that, you know, yeah, she's nervous and she doesn't really want to go through with it. But seeing him would make her say, you know what? I can do this. Okay. But that didn't happen. And, you know, he's very disheartened about that. So one of his friends commends him on how he conducted himself with the bride when the bride decided that she didn't want to go down the aisle. And he's just, he's upset. He's so hurt. He starts crying and his friend is comforting him. Okay, so as usual, after the weddings, we go to the outdoor events. I'm mad that y'all got these women in these dresses and these men in these suits out here in this damn cold. There's snow on the ground. All right, I'm sorry I didn't give you a lot of views of these dresses, but um, Lauren, girl, your dress is gorgeous. So they're in the getting to know each other phase, of course, like all the couples are. And uh, Lauren wanted to know from him if he still felt nervous. And he's like, no, you know, this is great. They're getting along. They're laughing and everything. And we have Lauren here giving her first impressions of Orion. And she says he's tall and handsome. And uh, she's very pleased. Lauren asks how old he is. And he says that he's 27. So Lauren lets Orion know. I want to say Orion. Okay, I know that's not how you say it. <laughs> I know I'm aware of the constellation name. La la la. So Lauren lets him know that she's never dated anyone younger than her. So Lauren wanted to know his zodiac sign and it's Sagittarius. Like another person that I can think of that's affiliated with the queen of music. You can figure that out. Anyway, <laughs> I'm always sidetracking. I'm really sorry, guys. But yeah, he's a Sagittarius. I don't know what all that extra jar jargon is. <laughs> I don't know how to say that word. I haven't said it in a million years. But all this Sadra, Sadra, Sun, Libra, Rising Child. I don't know. I'm just a Virgo. I don't know anything beyond that. So they kind of, you know, relate to each other because they're literally the same exact zodiac sign and they have the same moon rising at the same place. So Lauren lets him know that she's big on astrology and she had a little notepad that she sat down and she wrote everything that she wanted in a husband. And she says to him that he checks a lot of boxes. Girl, how would you know? How would you know if he checks a lot of boxes and y'all only been talking for five minutes? Okay, so Lauren lets him know that, you know, she needed a man that knows his way around a toolbox. She knows how to do stuff, okay? But she's tired. Lauren says she's good with hair. She did her own hair for the wedding and girl, can y'all take a second to look at this beautiful hairstyle? Orion lets Lauren know, cause she asked, was there some type of cultural significance to his hair being that way, um, bunned? And he lets her know what the significance is um, in the Native American culture. For, uh, for my culture, uh, Navajo and Dene men. Okay, I was gonna ask what. Yeah, okay. so for us, you know, our hair, it represents um, life. So when it's up and it's like this, um, you're of sound mind. You know, you're clearing your emotions, you're clearing your decisions, things like that. Um, and so that's why we do it for the wedding. Orion asks Lauren if she had any fears before. Lauren said that her fear was that he wouldn't be attracted to her basically but then she said she caught a glimpse of herself in the mirror and she realized she's a bad bitch I'm just kidding <laughs> but she's like she looked in the mirror and she was like I look good he's lucky to have me and that's how you need to think always Orion well, says that you know in his mind of what he wanted in a bride Lauren was everything that he envisioned now it's Austin and Becca's turn to sit in the freezing behind cold look at all that snow back there anyway Becca says that Austin seems very nice, very sweet, and very genuine. And the fact that he was crying during the ceremony, I missed that. I'm sorry I didn't tell you guys that. Okay, because I didn't know, because I ain't doing all that. I'm sorry. <laughs> but he was crying during the wedding. The fact that he was crying during the wedding really touched her heart. Becca asks Austin where he's from, or where he lives rather, and he says he lives in Denver. Actually, I live with my friend Kyla. Okay. What? I'm sorry, is that the norm where 
um, a man of his age would still be living in, uh, with a roommate and the roommate happens to be a female. I don't like that. Okay, but that guy doesn't seem to have a big deal with it. So who am I to say anything about it? He's known Kyla for 10 years. Even more problematic that you're living with her. And then he mentioned some other guy that he didn't mention when he mentioned who he lived with. I don't know what that was about. But he asks Becca how old she is. And Becca says that she's 31 years old and then they discover that they both are the same exact age. They talk about their careers and Becca says that she started her business 10 years ago as a wedding photographer. She has a staff of three other girls and she's doing her thing. We're back with Michael. Y'all just want to pour, pour salt into his little wounds, don't you? So Michael says that he doesn't want what happened on that day to affect how he approaches women. Now Michael got a letter from the wife or the well, the soon to be never, never was wife. And it's basically an apology letter, you know, stating that she appreciate how he reacted to everything, wishes him the best. What do you know? Lifetime teasing us again. They did not show Cameron and Claire's wedding on this episode. Anyway, I guess it's time to end this freaking video then. All right, guys, uh, we have reached the end of this recap. The next recap I will be doing. I'm gonna watch Cameron and Claire get married and I think there's, is there another couple left? I don't think so. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching my channel. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.